What if Gary Bettman decided to add 10 brand new teams to the NHL? How differently would that affect the simulation over the course of a 10 year span as that is exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video as I have added 10 brand new teams to the league and we are going to see if they can pull off a Vegas and win a Stanley Cup in a very short amount of time or if they're going to be a team like Columbus who has still never won pretty much anything in their franchise's history. But really, how differently would that affect the simulation? I mean, adding 10 new teams is a lot. The talent pool is definitely going to be diluted we are going to have players that should not be in the nhl be in the nhl but without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at the 10 new teams that have been added to the nhl here in nhl 24 we also have the hamilton tigers who are a brand new team the hartford whalers are coming back as well to the nhl Gary Bettman has decided to bring them back. We have the Houston Arrows, also going to be a brand new team in the league. We also have the Indianapolis Racers, Kansas City Scouts, the Milwaukee Crew, the Portland Pirates, the Quebec City Nordiques will be back again. And finally, we have the Salt Lake City Grizzlies. And honestly, I would not be shocked if Utah gets an NHL team. There's been plenty of rumors that they are the next team for the next city to get an NHL team. But there we go. We have the new age NHL instead of 32 teams we have 42 and obviously every single expansion team is rocking with a bunch of bum ass players i mean these guys are like 60 and 70 overalls don't expect them to be good right out of the gate but obviously the computers are going to make moves over the course of a 10-year sim and we are going to see if they can actually go on and win a single stanley cup or maybe they will just suck for the entire video i don't have those answers but we are definitely going to find out before we go ahead with the simulation if you guys do enjoy videos like this make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel turn on notifications also so you don't miss a single live stream or video that i put out now at the end of the very first season the tampa bay lightning are going to finish as the team with the best record in the regular season as they went 58 19 and 5 121 points followed by the columbus blue jackets who somehow also won 58 games colorado 158 toronto was up there florida and ottawa now at the bottom we definitely have all the expansion teams salt lake city being the worst that's the team that i chose with because that could possibly be the next city that the nhl goes to they only won nine nine games on the season i still don't think that's the worst record in nhl history the capitals have the worst i think they only won like seven games that season kansas city was bad atlanta also milwaukee hartford Quebec city kansas city was bad with only 11 wins atlanta had 15 milwaukee had 12 hartford was down there as well as quebec city did any of the Portland Pirates actually made the playoffs as well as the Houston Arrows and the Hamilton Tigers? So shout out to those three teams making it. They must have been in a weak ass division because Arizona and Vegas. Vegas with 43 wins are going to miss the playoffs over a team that had 19 wins on the season. That is crazy. Gary Batman, you need to change the playoff format. Now for the entire NHL, Connor McDavid is obviously going to lead in scoring with 120 points, followed by Brad Marchand, who had 116. Pasta had 115. Johnny Hockey was up there Nikita Kucherov had a good season he's probably gonna end up winning the heart this year him and Rakinen I'd say it's really tight I mean Kucherov has 15 points and I believe his last four games he's on an absolute heater to end the season and if we take a look at the goals Alexander Ovechkin is gonna lead with 62 at 38 years old he's only 50 goals away from Gretzky in real life right now which is absolutely crazy Nikita Kucherov had 60 Pasternak 56 line a Fortnite line a was up there with 56 McKinnon had 53 Leon Dreisaitl also had a pretty good season if we take a look at the defenseman, Eric Carlson is going to lead with 85 points. Miro Heiskanen had a big year as well. Andre Vasilevsky is going to lead and wins with 47. If we take a look at the shutouts, it's also going to go to Vasi with 11. He is definitely going to win the Vezla Trophy. And this is our year number one playoff bracket. So let's see who goes on and makes the Stanley Cup Finals and actually wins the Stanley Cup Finals. And funny enough, EA Sports is literally going to predict the future as the Edmonton Oilers go on and win the Stanley Cup against Ottawa, beating them in five games. Obviously, in real life, Ottawa. Ottawa's not going to make the final, but Edmonton is my pick to win the Stanley Cup this season. So thank you, EA, for seeing my vision. Leon Dreisel is going to lead the entire playoffs in scoring. Only had five goals, but 24 assists for 29 points in only 20 games. Kaprizov had 24, McDavid 24, Giroux had 21. Connor McDavid is going to win the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy, while the Maurice Richard will go to Alexander Ovechkin, the Norris to Miro Heiskanen, the Conn Smythe to Leon Dreisaitl. Obviously, Bedard is going to win the Calder, the Vesna will go to Vassy, and the Selkie will head to Ryan O'Reilly. Basically, I'm just going to be sitting here for 10 full years, not making any moves for the Salt Lake Grizzlies. Maybe they won't win a Stanley Cup because I'm controlling them, but luckily for us, we have nine other expansion teams that could 
to possibly build a Stanley Cup contender and go on and win it. So I'm hoping to see at least one time one of the expansion teams win the cup. If they don't, I'll be a little disappointed, but we do have nine more years to do so. So get your popcorn ready, sit back, relax, and watch some simulating. Now the Minnesota Wild are going to improve to the team with the best record in the NHL. Again, 58 wins is the record. So if you win 58 games, you're most likely going to finish first. They had 121 points. Followed by the defending Stanley Cup champion Edmonton Oilers. Carolina was up there. Columbus and Colorado now at the bottom. Give Atlanta winning only 20 games on the city. Salt Lake was bad. Hamilton was pretty bad. Did any of these teams end up making the playoffs? Yes. Milwaukee and Portland made the playoffs. I believe Portland made it last season as well. They actually won 35 games, which honestly is pretty damn impressive for an expansion team, at least at this point. Followed by Trevor Zegers is 110. Braden Point had 106. Dylan Larkin, 105. How the hell did Trevor Zegers have 46 goals? And 110 points that is honestly pretty bizarre now if we take a look at the goals ov is going to lead yet again 39 years old 56 goals followed by kucherov's 54 alex to had 52 and patrick fortnight line had 50 as he has back-to-back -back 50 goal seasons for the very first time now for defensemen again eric carlson is going to lead this time with 83 points on the season adam fox at 78 if we take a look at goalies gustafson is going to have the most wins at 42 and for the most shutouts in the entire nhl it'll go to well i have no idea what to say here we are just gonna ignore that john gibson shout out john gibson for leading the entire league in shutouts with six on the season and the minnesota wild are gonna go on and win the stanley cup as they defeat colorado in game seven of the finals matthew boldy is gonna have the most points in the playoffs at 26 he also had 13 goals nathan mckinnon had 25 kaprizov 25 and ryan johansson eight goals and 25 points in the playoff run johnny goodrow is gonna win the ted Lindsay, art ross and hart trophy ovia Again, is going to win the Maurice Richard, the Norris to Eric Carlson. Kirill Kaprizov is going to win the Conn Smythe, the Vesna to Philip Gustafson, and the Selkie will go to Sid the Kid Crosby for the very first time in his career. You would think he would have at least one with how people rave about his defensive prowess and how good defensively of a forward he is. I mean, he is a good defensive forward, but some people really overrate it. It kind of reminds me of Matthews, honestly. I think Crosby's more of a Selkie level defender compared to Matthews, at least in his prime, not now, obviously. Matthews' defense really gets over overrated by Leafs fans. Now moving along to season number three, Toronto is actually going to finish with the best record going 54, 22, and 6, 114 points. Followed by Minnesota who had 55 wins, Colorado was good, Edmonton and Boston at the bottom. We still have the expansion teams like Salt Lake City, Atlanta, Hamilton, Milwaukee. Shout out to Seattle only winning 34 games. Houston is going to make the playoffs with 34 wins. I guess their division was somewhat a uh, little bit easier than others. And I think Kansas City had the best record record out of any expansion team this season as they went 41 38 and 385 points now that is a legit playoff spot team that's a legit playoff team 100 percent well i guess i was wrong the hartford whalers 42 wins one more than kansas city so these two teams are legit and they are improving drastically now at the top of the nhl our timmy panarin is going to lead in points with 111 followed by joe pavelski's 110 this dude is 41 years old scoring 35 goals and 110 points a career high kaprizov had 108 jason roberts 107 jack hughes is up there as well as dylan larkin where the hell is Connor mcdavid on the goal side austin matthews is going to lead with 64 followed by kaprizov 63 sveshnikov at 53 jack eichel had 51 goals shout out to jason robertson also nikita kuchov who is this brandon hill day 90 overall 19 years of age 49 goals 82 points in his first season or second season his very first year in the nhl with the houston arrows for defensemen again eric carlson is going to lead actually he's gonna tie with shea theodore they each had 94 apiece alexander georgiev is gonna lead in wins with 45 now if we take a look at shutouts it's gonna go to capo kakinen who had seven yet again here we are this is our year number three playoff bracket let's see who goes on and wins the stanley cup we also have an expansion we also have a battle of the expansion teams between kansas city and houston down there and the edmonton oilers are gonna go on and win another stanley cup this time beating the vegas golden knights in the stanley cup finals in six Six games so not only did we win our second cup but also getting revenge over last season in real life beating vegas connor mcdavid is going to go ahead and lead the entire playoffs and goal scoring with 16 and points with 28 barbashev had 28 chandler stevenson had 28 mark stone was up there jordan eberly shout out to him back on the oilers now 
five goals and 26 points in 24 games. Artemi Panarin is going to end up taking home the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Matthew is going to win the Maurice Richard, the Norris, the Kale McCarr, the Con Smythe to Connor McDavid. Ilya Samsonov is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will go to Elias Lindholm. As we continue to move along here, two teams are very promising. I believe it was Kansas City and Houston as they had winning records over last season. So hopefully they can keep improving and maybe in like three years be a Stanley Cup contender. Now for the end of season number four, Carolina is going to finish with the best record winning 59 games followed by the Florida Panthers. Edmonton is always going to be good with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. The Rangers have 52 wins. Toronto was up there. Now at the bottom, we have the Washington Capitals finish as the worst team in the entire NHL. At the bottom, we have the Washington Capitals finishing as the worst team in the entire NHL. 28 wins followed by the milwaukee crew indianapolis was down there hamilton st louis atlanta so some of these expansion teams are moving up in the world or i should say are moving up in the nhl we have portland again making the playoffs obviously they're one of the best teams quebec made it the hartford whalers won 42 games losing 35 and 5 in overtime i think that's the best record by any expansion team it is so i'm very happy to see that at least one of these teams are a legit playoff contender year after year austin matthews is going to end up leading the entire nhl in goals with 66 and points with 118 followed by mariners 115 bedard is finally up there he had 113 as well as william nylander now on the goal side, other than Matthews, Brandon Hill is going to have the most at 59 in only his second season. Also 101 points, but Dart had 57, Kyle Connor 53, and shout out to Nikita Kucherov, 52 goals on the season. We take a look at defensemen, Adam Fox is going to lead, he had 84 points. Seth Jones somehow had 80, I mean he is playing with Connor Bedard, so maybe that's why. Gorsha Sturkin is going to lead and wins with 39, and for shutouts it's going to go to Stuart Skinner, who had 7, also a very good record, 34. 18. Again, this is our playoff bracket. This time, I believe we are in season number four. And shout out to the Minnesota Wild going on and I believe winning their second Stanley Cup with a video they won it in season number two and now in season number four. So we're basically rotating between Edmonton and Minnesota as they defeat the Sabres in six games in the finals. Also, shout out to Quebec City making the conference finals, losing to Minnesota, but they still made it. So that's very impressive. Now in the playoffs, Matthew Savoie is going to lead in scoring with 28 points. This dude is very young, only 23 years old. Jeff Skinner had 27, Kaprizov 27, Boldy 27, and Zuccarello who had 26. Austin Matthews going to win all the awards. The Norris to Adam Fox, the Khan Smythe to Matt Zuccarello. The Vesna will go to Igor Shosturkin, and the Selkie is going to go to Elias Lindholm for the second straight season in a row. Oh, we are about halfway through the simulation already, and the closest that we have got so far is Quebec City making the conference finals. They got swept by Minnesota who did go on and win the Stanley Cup, but that's a an improvement so the florida panthers are going to go ahead and finish with the best record this season winning 57 games followed by colorado who actually had more wins but less overtime losses so loser points determines who wins the president's trophy good job nhl followed by the buffalo sabers detroit was up there edmonton new jersey at the bottom we have the hamilton tigers who did win 20 games so competition is getting slightly better let's see who is the highest expansion team to make the playoffs this season i believe it was houston the houston arrows they won 45 games 97 points so they have been improving let's actually go ahead and check out their roster right now see who they have on the squad obviously brandon hill's their best player at a 96 overall he put up 55 and 110 points they also have brad marchand daniel sprung is there burkowski kapanen also is there travis sanheim who is their starting goalie Yan Bednar, who is only 78, so I'm surprised they won that many games with that bad of a goaltender, honestly, but offensively, they are very, very good. And for the entire NHL, Nikita Kucherov is going to go off 70 goals and 123 points, followed by Bedard, who had 116, Hill had 110, Barkov 110, and McDavid 109. And on the goal side, obviously, Kucherov is going to lead. Other than him, Patrick Alaine had the second most at 56. Kaprizov had 55, Hill had 55, Matthews 53. Kyle Connor 49. Dale McCarr is going to lead all defensemen in scoring with 89 points, followed by Quinn Hughes' 88. Now for goalies, Spencer Knight's going to lead and wins, breaking the NHL record at 51. And for shutouts, it's going to go to Devin Levi, who had seven on the season. 
And the rotation is literally going to continue as the Oilers are going to go on and win their third Stanley Cup of the video, beating Columbus in six games. McDavid and Dry literally have three rings at the moment. Who was the team that made it the furthest? It was Hartford, who got swept by Columbus in only his second round. Houston lost in the first round of Columbus. Johnny Goudreau is going to lead the entire playoffs in scoring only six goals, but 30 points. Followed by Kent Johnson's 27. Line A had 26 and 15 goals. Marchenko, 26. And McDavid, 24. Alexander Barkov is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, while the Art Ross and Maurice Richard will go to Nikita Kucherov. The Norris to Quinn Hughes. The Con Smythe will go to Kuzmenko instead of Connor McDavid, which is kind of weird. Vanacek is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will go to Hill of the Houston Arrows. So, moving along here, the Minnesota Wild are going to be the best team in the NHL. What are the odds they go on and win their third? Stanley Cup of the video they have two and Edmonton has three they've literally rotated year after year shout out to the Red Wings for winning also 56 games New Jersey was good Carolina Edmonton and Chicago at the bottom we have the Quebec City Nordiques they've kind of fallen off a cliff I wouldn't say I wouldn't say a cliff but maybe just a small rock maybe I wouldn't say a cliff but maybe a small rock as they only had 27 wins they were never really that great Hamilton was bad Pittsburgh Salt Lake City LA at least some of the expansion teams are doing a little better than previous seasons as the houston arrows went 37 35 and 10 i believe the only expansion team to actually make the playoffs this year actually i was wrong yet again the atlanta thrashers 38 wins and 91 points so they are very good as well and the portland pirates have the best record out of any expansion team ever 46 27 and 9 101 points austin matthews yet again is going to lead everybody in goal scoring with 66 and points with 120 followed by capri softwood 107 nylander 107 brandon point was up there as well as Mitch Marner. Now on the goal side, other than Matthews, Kucherov will have the most with 55, followed by Jason Robertson who had 52. Philip Forsberg was up there. Patrick Laine, McDavid. We take a look at defenseman Quinn Hughes is going to have his best season. Only 11 goals but 91 assists for 102 points. Philip Gustafson is going to have the most wins at 46 by any goalie and the most shutouts at 8. And the trend is going to continue as the Minnesota Wild will go on and win the Stanley Cup beating New Jersey in 5 games in the finals. I have no idea how this happened. I've literally never seen anything like that. We are six years in, and the Minnesota Wild and the Edmonton Oilers have gone three for three, rotating year after year for Stanley Cups. Pierre-Luc Dubois is going to end up leading the NHL in scoring for the playoffs. He also had 12 goals with 30 points, followed by Timo Myers, 23. Kalen Addison had 22. Jack Hughes, 21. And Jesper Bratt had 21 as well. Matthews is going to take on the Ted Lindsay, Maurice Richard, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. The Norris, the Kale McCarr, the Conn Smythe to Du Bois. Arasov is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will go to Lindholm yet again for the third time in the simulation so the toronto maple leafs in year number seven are going to finish as the best team in the regular season going 54 21 and 7 followed by the red wings who had 53 wins the oilers are up there 54 boston was good new jersey vancouver at the bottom we have the pittsburgh penguins and i mean in seven years time i'm willing to bet they're probably the worst team in the entire league san jose was bad as well as calgary quebec won 30 games so better than any other team but let's take a look and see which is the highest rated expansion team to make the playoffs believe it is the Portland Pirates 43 wins Kansas City actually had more wins and a better record overall but not as many points because of the loser points 11 overtime losses so Kansas City Portland are probably our best hopes at a Stanley Cup victory but honestly I see Minnesota and Edmonton dominating this entire simulation we're over halfway done and they've won every single Stanley Cup so far yet again Matthews is going to dominate the NHL 67 goals 129 points taking home both the Maurice Richard and the Art Ross William Nylander had 124 Four, Marner 114 Pasternak was up there McDavid had 107 Robertson 105 on the goal side Robertson came in second place with 59 goals McKinnon had 52 Bedard only 52 He's been relatively quiet. I don't know why he's wearing number 18, but I mean, he had that one big season, 57 goals and 113 points. Dale McCarr again is going to lead all defensemen in scoring, this time with 98 points for goalies. Sam Sonoff's going to have the most wins at 43. And for shutouts, it's going to be a, a big tie between Skinner, Mers Lincolns, Hellebuck, Thompson, and Vassy. They all had five shutouts apiece. And finally, the curse has been broken as Toronto goes on and wins the Stanley Cup for the first time in over 50 years, beating Ottawa in six games 
games in the finals. And finally, we don't have Minnesota or Edmonton winning the cup for the first time in the video. Matthews is going to dominate the playoffs. 13 goals, 27 points. Thomas Shabbat had 26. Mitch Marner, 23. Tim Stutzla, 22. And Frank Vetrano, 22. Again, Austin Matthews is going to dominate. The Norris is going to go to Kale McCarr. The Conn Smythe also to Matthews. The Vesna to Diego. And while the Selkie Trophy will go to Brandon Hill of the Houston Arrows. It looks like the Edmonton Oilers are on a revenge tour as they have finished first in the entire NHL going 65-15 and 2, 132 points. I believe this is the best record. The best record that we've seen this entire video. Tampa Bay was good. Minnesota was up there. Buffalo, Vancouver, Ottawa at the bottom. We have the Quebec City Nordiques yet again. Hamilton was down there. Salt Lake City really hasn't gotten any better throughout the eight years that we've been here. In these standings from any expansion team, I believe it's going to be the Portland Pirates who won 46 games, 29 losses, 7 in overtime, 99 points. So they are back in the playoffs. Kansas City also made it. They had a good record as well. Connor McDavid is going to lead everybody in scoring with 122 points, followed by Bedard's. 115 or actually 113 my bad Pasternak had 112 Kaprizov was up there Farrell who was this Farrell guy Sean Farrell on the Montreal Canadiens 33 goals 106 points 29 years of age speaking of goals Bedard is finally going to break out scoring 65 leading every single player in the league all by Tage Thompson who had 58 Pasternak had 56 Kaprizov 55 Jason Robertson 53 Christopher Gallagher who is the leader on the Kansas City team 88 overall elite potential 52 goals and 92 points. Evan Bouchard is actually going to lead all defenders in scoring. 14 goals and 91 points if we take a look at goalies here. Otter is going to have the most wins at 56 now on the Edmonton Oilers. And for shutouts, it's going to go to Tarasov, who had 8 on the season. And shout out to the New Jersey Devils for going on and breaking the curse as Minnesota did make the finals but ended up losing in 6 games to New Jersey. Uh, Portland did make the conference finals against Minnesota. They got dominated in 5 games though, so there's a clear gap between the best expansion team and any other NHL team as they've still not even made a Stanley Cup Finals, let alone won one. Andrei Svechnikov is going to have the most points or tie for the most points alongside Pavel Zaka. They each had 29 apiece. Holtz had 26. Aho 25. Dubé had 24. David is going to win the Ted Lindsay. Art Ross and Hart Trophy. Bedard. The Maurice Richard. The Norris is going to go to Evan Bouchard. The Conn Smythe to Pavel Zaka. Jake Ottinger is going to win the Vesna Trophy. And the Selkie will go to Brand Brandon Hill yet again. So obviously the best team in the video so far has been the Edmonton Oilers and they are still very good going 59, 19 and 4, 122 points followed by the Red Wings who had 55 wins. Colorado was good. Minnesota and Kansas City, the first expansion team not only to win 50 games but also finish top 5 in the entire NHL as they win 50, 24 and 8, 108 points. So shout out to them. Connor Bedard has finally broken through, leading in goals with 65 and points with 100 24. He's in the prime of his career. 26 years old. Followed by Brandon Hill, who had 113. Braden Point had 112. Kaprizov was up there, as well as Austin Matthews, who had 107. Now, on the goal side, the other 60 goal scorer was Mr. Matthews himself. He had 61. Walters had 57. Gallagher, 55. Kaprizov, 53. And Tage Thompson, who had 52. Again, Kale McCarr, dominating defenseman in scoring. This time, he had 17 goals and 91 points. Gabriel Diego is going to lead in wins with 46. And for shutouts, it's going to go to Kochekov, who had nine on the season. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to go on and win another Stanley Cup, their second of the video, as they defeat the Minnesota Wild in five games in the finals. Minnesota needs to calm the hell down. Literally have lost two Stanley Cup finals and also won three of them. Now for the playoffs, Mitch Marner is going to lead with only six goals, but 32 points, leading all players. Austin Matthews had 18 goals and 27 points. Jack Eichel had 23. Kaprizov, 22. As Connor Bedard is going to dominate the Norris is going to go to Quinn Hughes, the Conn Smythe to Mitchell Marner, the Vesna back to back, or not back to back, but back to Diego for the second time in three seasons. And the Selkie Trophy will go to Michael Misa. And now we are in the final season of the video, yet to see a single expansion team even make the Stanley Cup finals, let alone win one. So I'm not expecting it. 
but it would be a very pleasant surprise if somebody stepped up. So at the end of the final season, Toronto is going to finish with the best record, winning 62 games, followed by the Edmonton Oilers, who have been very good throughout the simulation, at least for the first half. They've been quiet, kind of quiet for the last like three, four years. Kansas City finished top three, 53 wins. Detroit was up there as well as Minnesota. Austin Matthews is back to dominating, leading in goals with 75 and points with 122, tying Christopher Gallagher, who also had 122. Nick Suzuki had 116, Cole Caulfield 112, Matthew Nyes was up there as well as Mitch Marner. Now on the goal side, other than Matthews, Kaprizov will have the most at 60, followed by Caulfield's 58, Gallagher at 58, and Gore had 57. Kale McCarr, the best defenseman of all time, maybe 18 goals, 86 points at this point. Hasn't won any Stanley Cups, won a couple more Norris trophies, but he's been pretty consistent, leading defenseman in scoring. Cali Klang is going to lead in wins with 43 for goaltenders, and for shutouts, it's going to go to Ilya Sorokin, a 37-year-old Sorokin had 11 shutouts on the season. And the Edmonton Oilers are going to go on and win their fourth Stanley Cup of the video, I believe, as they beat Kansas City in Game 7 of the final. So we were this close to having an expansion team win the Stanley Cup. At least one made the finals. Literally the only one to do so in the entire video. So I guess that's a success for me. Shout out to Kansas City, the best expansion team that joined the NHL in this 10-pack team list. Tanner Howe is going to lead the playoffs in scoring with 36 points. He also had 15 goals. Mercer had 32. Good Branson had 31. Lucas Raymond was up there. Gallagher and McDavid, who was 36 years old, but still putting up numbers. Matthews, again, is going to dominate the awards. The Norris will actually go to Rasmus Dahlin, who's on the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Conn Smythe will go to Mercer. The Vesna to Ilya Samsonov. And the Selkie Trophy is going to go to Michael Misa for back-to-back -back seasons. And that is going to do it for this video, boys. If you enjoyed it, leave some support. Also, I would like to mention this is not my roster of teams. Shout out to this guy for making the teams and making the roster overall. I downloaded it from the community files. Without him, this video would not be possible, so I very much appreciate it. The Kansas City Scouts were the best expansion team, the only team to make the finals, and actually... They were only one game away from winning the Stanley Cup over the Oilers, who were very dominant, winning four Stanley Cups in 10 seasons, so McDavid might go down as the GOAT. Regardless, let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next. I would like to say thank you all for watching, and until next time, don't be silly. Wrap your willy.